few deep sky objects can be as difficult to shoot as Orion's nebula. One of the brightest objects in the night sky, a winter classic, M42. Orion has a massively bright core in which four stars are forming. This is very easy to overexpose. The best way to approach this is to do multiple exposures at different lengths to prevent the core from becoming blown out. Then combining the different data together to create one image. Here's how I took a picture of Orion combining different exposures to create the final image. Tonight is looking clear, so I think I'm going to take the opportunity to go and image Orion as the moon will go to the right of where it is at the moment and then leave the sky hopefully nice and clear. I've just started shooting Orion and you can see that, that the stars that are twinkling that you can see there are the Orion constellation and if I go to one side you can see the street lamp and you can see the angle of my telescope so that's a real big problem for me um, particularly with guiding so that's the only way I could do it and I could move my scope but if I move to the right I can't image as late and if I'm here I'm against the street lamp so I've started imaging and this is what we've got so far exposure finished there we go. that's a one minute exposure 60 second exposure so we'll see how we get on with this here we are in Pix Insight. When I was imaging outside, I managed to get five different sets of exposures. I started off with 20 second exposures. I then moved up to 60 second exposures. Then I did 120 second exposures, then 180 second exposures, and then finally 300 second exposures. And what I'm planning to do with this is process each and every one of those the same. So I'm going to try my level best to process each of them the same. Now, now what I've done, I've already done the 20, 60, 120 second. I'm just going to nip through and do the 180 second exposure here. Basically, I've tried my hardest to apply the same processing to every single image. And then we're going to go into GIMP and put all of those onto layers and hopefully then create our final image. So let's dive into PixInsight now. So the first process that I'm going to do is a screen transfer function. So I unlink and then we use the nuclear signal. And there we go, there's our image. So this is the 180 second length exposures. And you can see quite clearly the core is blown out, but the outside edges have got quite a lot of good detail there. So that's really good. So this is my usual process. I try to keep it really simple because I think that's the best approach with all of these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is background neutralization, default settings. And then we reset the screen transfer function. Great, that's good. Then I'm going to do color calibration. Again, those were all default settings and I like to just reset the screen transfer function again. Then SCNR which is set to remove green and you can see there's kind of a green haze down this side here. This will remove that so let's apply that. Great that's now gone so I'm going to reset screen transfer function again. Just I just like to do that because it kind of I feel like it um, maybe it's just psychological but I feel like it kind of resets the process. Then from here, we're going to do some star reduction. So I'm going to make a star mask. So my usual process is to go to the spanner, copy this value, and then paste it into the shadows, and then back to the spanner and copy the second value, and then paste that into midtones, and then apply that. Great, that's made a star mask there. So I'm just going to 
apply that to the image and then I'll just minimize that and put it down there for now. So anything that's red is protected and anything that's not red is going to be affected. So the mask, I just need to select it and then go mask and show mask. So we've got our image then and then morphological transformation. I'm just going to do default settings and then bring some of those stars down slightly. There we go. So it's just reduced the size of those stars. Now I'm going to do multi-scale linear transform and I'm just going to put my usual default values in here. So four layers, noise reduction. The first one, I put that at two and then 0.33 and three iterations. Second one, one, 0.5 and two iterations. And then the third one, 0.5 and one iteration and I want it on RGBK components and then just apply that. Great, that's actually removed quite a lot of the background noise there which is great. Okay, my next process I'm going to just clear this down and we're going to do exactly the same but with seven layers now and the first one I'm leaving at defaults, second one I'm leaving at defaults and the third one, I'm going to put in the values 2, 1, and 1. And then the fourth layer, I'm going to go 1, 1, and 1. And then I'm going to change this to chrominance. That's great. It's already looking a lot cleaner, which is brilliant. Now, I can see here that I've got a bit of a gradient. It's darker on this edge, and it's lighter on this edge. So I'm going to use... A dynamic process and we're going to use dynamic background extraction which is this tool here and what I'm going to do I'm going to click on the image and I'm now going to just click where I would like to put the samples so I'm just going to work my way through and put samples along this edge and along that edge there making sure I avoid anywhere with nebulosity so here we go Okay, that looks great. I'm now going to go to target image correction and then I want it to subtract. So I will then apply that. Okay, great. So that was our original image with the samples and it has now subtracted the background. So we'll just do a quick screen transfer function. Great, and we can actually see it's lighter over there and darker over there, which is what we wanted to be removed, that lightness and now we're going to actually do a screen transfer function on the new image. So I'll reset screen transfer function. Oh, that's much better. Yep, the background's much more even. So that's great. Okay, so I'll just minimize that. I don't think I'll need it, but we can minimize it. So now this is the image which we're now working on. The next procedure I'm going to do is a script, which is in the easy processing suite, which you can download and all I'm going to do is do the easy denoise to this image. Now this takes a very long time, so I'm going to actually stop recording and let it do its thing. So all I've done is pretty much default settings and I'm just going to click run easy denoise and let it do its thing and I'll come back on the other side, so see you soon. The easy denoise has now finished and you can see quite clearly it's significantly less noisy, so that's really good. I'm very pleased with that. Um, with the easy denoise, if you do use it, you have to use it before you go into the non-linear phase, so before you actually stretch the image properly. So um, I'm now going to stretch the image, so I'm just going to reset the screen transfer function again. So that's, that's now reset. And then I'm going to go into histogram transformation, and I'm just going to drag these settings across onto here and then start a preview and you'll see it'll be completely white because we've got two screen transfer functions so I'll take this one off 
and then we see our image. Now at the moment it's really overstretched. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the amount on this preview that has been stretched by because I don't want too much. I still want some of this nebulosity and all of the dust that's around there which looks amazing but I don't want it to be overstretched. I think that looks pretty good. Okay great so I'm going to stop that preview and then I'm going to actually apply it to my image. Brilliant, so there's our stretched image. The final stage that I'm going to do is curves transformation to bring out the colors. I'm going to again start a preview, which is here, and then I'm going to go into saturation, and now I'm going to go crazy and bring out some of these blues and reds. So I'm just going to start around here. Wow, and then bring out some of that detail. That's fantastic. That's without, and that's with. Okay, let's apply that to our image. That's amazing, that's really good. So we've now got a nicely stretched image with some colors. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to that. I think that's pretty much the final step that I'm going to do. So there's Orion, and you can really see the running man nicely there as well. So. What I am going to do is apply all of the same, pretty much the same procedure to each of the different exposure lengths and then we're going to go into GIMP and we're going to apply each one to a layer and then make our final image. We're now in GIMP and what I'm going to do is open a series of layers with each of the individual files that I've got. So let's open up these files. So I'm going to drag that one on there. And now I'm going to do exactly the same with each of the other ones. Only this time I'm going to put them as a layer. So it's created a new layer over here. And I'm just going to move me, because I'm in the way, I'm going to move me over there so you can actually see the layers over here. Okay, we have all of our different images here. That we can see and we've got a 300 second, a 180 second, a 120 second, 60 second and a 20 second and you can see if we were to look here we can visibly see those four stars that are at the center of the trapezium in Orion there and if I steadily remove each of these, if I just zoom out a tiny bit, if I remove each of these you can see progressively how it gets more and more blown out. We want to get that detail in the center there. What we need to do now is ensure that each of these are in the same place and you can see if I deselect these they actually move across the screen. The stars don't line up. So what I have to do is line up every single image that we've got here. So I'm going to select the 20 second exposure that we've got there and reduce the opacity so that it's about 50% and you can see now we've now got two sets of stars. So I select the layer and then go to the cursor key up here and then we need to move the image around so that it lines up. Now the easiest way to do that is by using the cursor key. So if I zoom in a little bit on a star or a group of stars, you can see the stars are moving up. So what I need to do is go the opposite direction and line up those stars. Okay, they're lined up and you can just see at the top here there seems to be some slight rotation so I'm going to then use the rotate tool, so tools, transform tools and go down to rotate and now I'm just going to rotate the image slightly just to line up those stars. <laughs> Okay, I've tried really hard to line up those stars, so now I'm going to put the opacity back up to full and then turn off that layer and then I'm going to work on the layer below. So we can see that these ones are not aligned, so we need to select the one below and then line up these stars. So again using the curse keys. 
okay they look pretty much like they're lined up and then I'm going to put the opacity back up again turn off this layer and then change the opacity on this layer and then line up the layer underneath Okay, they look lined up and put the opacity back up. Turn off that layer and then turn the opacity down on this one and then line up the final layer underneath. Great. And now hopefully, if I just put the opacity back up to full, now if I was to switch between each layer, so there's the 300 second, and then I'm adding in the 180 second, and now the 120 second, and now the 60 second, and then finally the 20 second. So all of those stars now line up. So my next job is to apply a mask to each of these layers so that the 300 second exposure shows through. So I go to the layer I want, I right click, I go to add layer mask, black with full transparency and click add. And I do the same with each of these. Great, so we've now got each of our exposures actually unable to be seen because they've got a mask over them. I'm now going to get the paintbrush and I'm going to change the paintbrush so that we're painting with white and I'm going to change the hardness I'm going to bring all the way down, the force I'm going to bring all the way down and I also want to change the size so it's a little bit bigger so you can see I've now got a good circle there and then what we're going to do is select the 20 second exposure and we're going to paint in those four stars the trapezium that we've got here so because I've selected white I can now start drawing here and you can see those four stars have just started appearing so I'm now going to go through and just paint some more in so that we get rid of this blown out center so I'll just work my way around this Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just need to make this area a little bit darker. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing exactly the same, but with the layer underneath to try and bring out the next layer's worth of detail. So I'm going to start just painting this detail in. The whole point of this is to try and bring out a less blown out center. And now I'm going to do the same again, but with the next layer. And the same again with the final layer. So we can already see that we've got each of those layers appearing in our image. But it quite clearly you can see where we've done it. Now what we're going to do now is use this tool, which is the smudge tool. And we're going to go back to where we were before. And I'm going to do exactly the same, but just smudge across to try and blend those areas where the graduation between where we drawn in so it just smooths it out a bit and do exactly the same for each of those layers just to try and blend it a bit better and we're only working on the mask at the moment with this smudging so it just smudges the edges so they blend a bit better Okay, that's not looking too bad actually. So if we now, if I was to now remove these layers, you can see where we were before. And if I now add in, so that's our first layer there, which reveals those stars. Then we added this layer, which gave a little bit more detail coming through. And then we brought out a kind of blend to go between the two. And then final bit here where we've blended those together and you can see if we zoom in on this we've now got those stars of Orion the trapezium around here 
and the core has some detail as well. And if we zoom out fully, we can now see that the core is a lot less blown out. So if I was to just turn those layers off, you can see that it just returns to a completely white core. And the idea is that we're trying to get those, those stars still so that we can see them. OK, that's really good. I'm now going to crop this image. So I will quickly get the cropping tool and I will go across like this. That's great. I'm going to save this off as a TIFF and then we're going to go back into PixInsight because there's a couple of little bits that I'd like to do to the image. Um, I can see there's a couple of hot pixels uh, that I'd like to fix and I'm going to use another tool to do that. So I'll save this off by going to File, Export As. We'll save it as a TIFF. And now we'll go back into PixInsight and continue with the processing in there. We're now back in PixInsight. What I would like to do is fix a couple of pixels which are clearly still showing as being hot. So you can see here there's a red pixel which isn't a star, it's obviously an artifact which I've picked up somewhere in this whole process. So what I'm going to do now is use the clone stamp tool. So if you go to processes, all processes and down to clone stamp tool. What you do is you hold control and you click on an area that you want the color to be and then you click close to where the actual color is going to be. And then you use that and it colors in over those areas. So you can see I just got rid of that one there. Now I'm just going to go through the image. There were some more which I saw earlier. Here we go. There's a little blue one here. So I'm thinking I'm going to take a sample from there and then click there and now I'm going to just color that in. So that blue one has now gone. So I'm just going to go around this image. There's another one just there which I should be able to just get rid of. But you have to be very careful you don't actually remove correct material, so correct stars. So it's um, a, a tricky balancing act, but I'm fairly sure that that one there, I think, is a hot pixel. So I'm just going to color that in. That's now gone. I'm fairly sure that that's not a star. I'm just going to color that one in as well. Great. I think that's it for the clone stamp tool. And now I'm just going to go back into curves and try and just tweak it a little bit to see if there's anything else I can get out. Back to saturation. Start preview. I don't want to go too crazy but I just want to make it a bit more vibrant. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good so I'll apply that. The very last thing I'm going to do is some denoising. So go to processes, all processes, and go to TGV denoise. And then I'm going to start a small preview. Somewhere around here, I think. I'll select the preview and try and get rid of some of this noise if we can. So I'm just going to go with defaults at the moment. Just reset the preview. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I just decreased a little bit. Reset the preview. That's good. I'm going to apply that to the image. And remove the preview. And there we go. That's the finished image of Orion. Um, it's a combination of all of those different exposures brought together and um, just using layers to bring out the core without blowing out the rest of the image. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Um, this is probably my best Orion so far and I'm probably going to process it again but I'll put this image up at the end of the video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Take care everybody and I'll see you in the next video.